Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how I finish a teddy bear. So usually I don't do videos like this, but because this is a special teddy bear, I decided that I'll, that I'll make a video like this. And it's special because as you can see, um, it has a 18th century gown. And I have, only speaking, I have been dreaming, dreaming about making um, such a outfit for a teddy bear for a quite long time. And finally I did it. Uh, and I thought that it would be interesting and fun to watch uh, how I dress up a teddy bear in all these layers. Um, I try to make it as authentic as possible but it's of course a more simplified version because uh, in 18th century the ladies wore like a lot of layers so i don't have all the historical layers just just the essential ones um so uh, let's start our dressing up process so um the first layer would be the the petticoat uh i I wanted in the beginning to try to make like the, the proper authentic one uh, with the metal filling in the inside, uh, but because the size is very tiny, <laughs> I honestly speaking gave up. Maybe one day I'll make a teddy bear a little bit bigger and try to make proper proper petticoat. So I decided just to, to use laces because they add enough volumes on the sides. Well, If you have ever seen the, the pictures of the historical petticoats, I mean like uh, the ones which consist of two parts on, on the sides, um, there is a funny, funny fact about them, because uh, here in these places they had the holes and all the, all the upper skirts and and even the, the main gowns had the, the holes on the sides. So ladies at that time used it as pockets. Because we ladies have struggled without the pockets from the very beginning of the fashion, I suppose. So they placed all these lady, lady stuffs here in the petticoats and then just like whoop, put their hands there and do whatever they, they wanted, they needed. Oh. Need some more? I want to, to make it as tight as possible. So the petticoat won't lose it, its shape. speaking it's not very easy to make such a such a such a small ribbon especially when you can see it like in front of, the, of your eyes so the petticoat is ready so the next layer would be the underskirt so you can see it has like kind of a holes on the sides as I had told uh, you for the purpose of the of the petticoats uh, of the of the pockets sorry as possible so the, the gown won't lose its pretty shape My teddy bear is like a proper 18th century lady because um, if you were rich enough, um, you obviously had the maids who helped you dressing up. So today I'm the 
from the maid for my teddy bear for helping her dressing up in her lovely gown. So as you can see it already has its proper 18th century shape on the on the sides. So next we have the, the underskirt of the of the gown. So I'm going to stitch it here. I think that I already mentioned in some of my previous videos that because the the teddy bears which I make are for collecting purposes and not for most of them not for playing. So I always stitch the, the clothes the way that they can be moved from the teddy bear. And I'm going to do the same way here. part of the video when I'm stitching uh, faster so you won't get bored when I'm doing it. I'm stitching the skirt. So this is how it looks like. Oh, how I love this shape. This is so pretty. Sometimes I'm so jealous to the ladies of the 18th century. They could wear such a wonderful, wonderful gowns. Okay, so our next step is the main part of the gown. So uh, you can have a closer look here. I am very proud of this. Uh, I suppose there is a special name in English for these uh, folds on the back, but I don't know it unfortunately. So for me, they are just the folds. Um, I use the the real historical pattern to make them. I like to make all this um, all this outfit. So all this, all this ruffles and sleeves, and I wanted to show you that for um, for this gown uh, I bought this fabric, but it was too bright, too too bright white, so um, I stained it a little bit, so you can see that it looks a little bit more fading in the end. So let's let's put it on. Historically, so in the beginning I said that uh, I'm using only the main parts of the like historical uh, gowns. So originally there should be like a underwear, like a shirt and panniers and corset, of course. But that would be too many layers of fabric for such a small teddy bear. So I thought that I want use all of them because it would be too thick and so pretty although uh, I don't know it's like it's if it's seeable on the camera like I used the special uh, thickening fabric for making this part a little bit more thick so like looking a kind of a like a corset so 
So now I'm gonna stitch this part together and I'm, I'm gonna make it uh, look faster in the video. So you won't get bored looking how I'm stitching and stitching and stitching. So we are done with stitching here as well. Hooray! So our lovely lady is almost ready. So the last finishing touch is the head ribbon. Um, usually I try to make all the head pieces uh, with the laces here to fix it on the heads but um, when I tried the white lace on her it didn't look well and unfortunately I don't have the, um, the ribbon which is the same color as her fur so uh, I decided to use the elastic because uh, it's quite easy to hide it in the fur show you how. So if you properly work with the, with the fur here, it will color. dressed up teddy bear lady um, I s hope that the camera can focus and you can you can see how she looks um, thank you for for watching I hope that it was uh, fun and interesting for you to watch maybe you get some new knowledges in historical fashion <laughs> and uh, see you next time when I'll make a video of her for my um, Etsy shop with all the like details and measurements. Thank you one more time and have a good day. Bye!